being spied on for hours would do that. Mr. Fu and Lan Fang are keeping eyes on him? Hey, where's the young lord? They just live their lives like this? I don't know. Maybe he ran off again. <laughs> Good grief, I can't take my eyes off him for a second. Young Lord, where have you taken off to this time? Uh, what if he's collapsed somewhere again? If so, I'd say it's a relief. Master Ling, where are you? Well, he hasn't collapsed. He's just standing dramatically on this roof. <laughs> Something about this country doesn't feel right. Very observant. Episode 16, Footsteps of a Comrade in Arms. Since it's night now, I can go and cut someone up, right? You gotta give me something! It's not the only one who's bored. How much longer am I stuck here keeping a watch on this guy anyway? What does the colonel say? Don't worry about your other duties. But if anyone, even military personnel outside of our unit, sees you, he'll have you court-martialed before you can blink. I don't suppose you have any news of a happier sort to report. Indeed. Hold it! I found myself a girlfriend! A new one? Already? This guy moves fast. Hey, do you think this new girl would be fun to cut up? Come on, what do you say? Can I Please, just get out of here. Havoc, right? How come he gets to go out and date? And this other guy has to stay here and watch Barry the Meat Man. Also, it's weird how Barry's just like, hanging out, playing chess. Why not Sean Connery instead? Hey. Oh, he did collapse. Okay? Well, you're a long way from home, all right. I'll need to see your entry visa, please. <laughs> Oops. Out of the way, everyone. Illegal alien coming through. Young master, where are you? He's in trouble again. He's collapsed, I'm sure of it. Okay, guess we should stop by the military offices first. In that case, I think I'll head straight to the Hughes' house and let them know I'm in town. Oh, no. We shouldn't be all that far behind you. Okay, see you later. I wonder if Lieutenant Colonel Hughes has put together any more information on the uh, Philosopher's Stone since we left. They're really dragging out the pain, huh? I think it's best if we give Hughes the information that we found out first. The homunculi. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Hughes said he was in the court-martial office. Hmm. <laughs> this way. Yeah, Hughes figured it out, right? Or at least he figured out a lot of it. I don't want them to go here. I don't want to go through this. This is gonna suck. I feel like I'm walking into a trap, willingly. I wonder how they'll react to it, because I can see them also taking this very personally, like Roy Mustang. That was the phone booth. Shaska! Yes? You have a key for room number three, don't you? Yes. Oh, oh, wait! It's still a total mess from when I was using it earlier! It's fine. I just need it to gather some documents, that's all. If you can just wait a moment, I'll clean it right up for you! Um, excuse me? <laughs> Colonel? Colonel Mustang? Uh, hello, Sheska. How long was I asleep? About ten minutes, I think. She deserves a promotion. I'll be back. Was that Colonel Mustang that just left? <laughs> Good morning to you, Sheska. Tell me, what was he doing here? The storeroom door is open. I'm sorry, I opened it, sir! I'll bet the colonel twisted your arm, didn't he? Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Although, I do wonder what the colonel was looking into. Do you know? Ooh, what is this guy up to? He did ask if there were any materials having to do with the fifth laboratory. And also, he was looking into the Hughes case. Mm. Is this guy a spy for Bradley? I got my job here through General Hughes. Uh, yes. I Oops. remember. Well, I've got tons of work to do. Yeah, I'll bet you do. Huh? What? It's Envy. wonder how many times it's going to get me. Some weight. Good to see his eyes working. Maybe. But what happened to you? There was an incident down in the south. Can't talk about it. I ran into the Elric brothers down there. Major. Sir? 
Did you tell them about Hughes's death? No. no. I couldn't bring myself to do it. I'm dealing with the same issue in both shows I'm watching. People having trouble explaining the death of others. It hurts extra when it's dragged out like this. Though in the case of Ed in particular, I don't feel like it makes any difference how he finds out. It's going to be really bad no matter what. This time he stuck his nose into the Elric brothers' investigation and found out something he would have been better off not knowing. If the Elric brothers found out he died trying to help them, they would blame themselves. So, you're not telling them was kind. Be careful, sir. You never know who might be listening in on you. Excuse me. That was a great conversation. Roy Mustang and Alex Lewis Armstrong are also sort of being set up as either coming into conflict or becoming allies. I don't know which one it is. Armstrong, I don't know what to make of his role in it because it feels like beneath his burly and gorgeous exterior, he's a really sensitive person. But he also feels a little bit too humble, if that makes sense. Like, who am I to meddle, right? Who am I to get involved? Like, he must know that he did some horrible things, right? He must have guilt. Someone that's that introspective and that caring about others must carry, like, some kind of trauma about the war and all that stuff. But he's not the type to stir things up. I think someone like that will understand the dangers that that brings. Like, Roy Mustang is sort of in the right, at least from our perspective, right? Like, Hugh's death was a tragedy. There is shadiness going on in the military, but his search is going to bring great danger not only to himself, but to his crew, the people around him. And Armstrong is the kind of person to be really sensitive to that. So I'm really curious to see how things will play out for Armstrong. Hey guys, it's been a while. If the lieutenant's here, that means so is... Thanks for waiting. <laughs> yep, the colonel. Well, hello, Full Metal. Colonel Mustang, what are you doing here in Central? You didn't hear? I was transferred to this branch last month. And you guys? We're just doing a little information gathering. And we were thinking that we'd pay Lieutenant Colonel Hughes a visit a little later today. Where is he, anyway? Who's gonna be the one? Not here. Huh? He retired out in the country. Come on. Someone's got a man up around here. You're just making it worse. Full metal. Hmm? Watch yourself. Don't do anything crazy. That's what Armstrong said. <laughs> also, it's great advice for Ed. It's very relevant. It's also notable to see how Ed treats Roy Mustang. Because Mustang is the one who brought him into everything, right? But Ed's smart. He's an intuitive guy. And he knows that it's not all in Ed's best interest, right? Like, Roy definitely sees him as something to be used. And Roy does have an emotional power over him. Not only his command, but just Roy is very good at being an emotional... I don't want to say manipulator because that's too strong a word, but Roy's sharp and he knows how to get what he wants and he's very driven in that way. Ed is someone who's very autonomous and I wonder if maybe Roy isn't a threat to him in that way. And this is sort of an odd thought as well, but Roy is also in some ways like the closest thing that they have to a father figure in their lives and they don't have great history with that. And so the fact that he's kind of in that role but he can't be trusted, it just adds a whole other dimension to those feelings. Now you've decided to treat them like children? There's no need for them to know just yet. Fewer obstacles that stand in their way right now. The better. Colonel, they are going to find out someday. Right. It's funny. I've accused Armstrong of being soft. But right now, I'm no better than he is. That's true. I fail to see anything soft about it. It's cruel, Colonel. I can't believe Hughes is actually gone. Oh, I almost forgot, brother. We need to tell Winry about all this. Hmm? She went straight to the Hughes house. Yeah, you're right. They're going to find out, like this episode. Lieutenant Ross! I haven't seen you two here in a while. You're in a hurry. Why the rush? We just heard about Lieutenant Colonel Hughes. It's rough news, huh? There was still so much that we wanted to tell him about. We would have liked to say goodbye. We weren't able to reach you. Don't worry, though. The military gave him a proper send-off. Wow, that was nice. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sure you'll both be glad to know. He was promoted. Two whole ranks. Not the Brigadier General? He retired to the country and they promoted him? <laughs> Lieutenant Ross? <laughs> this is coming out one way or the other. Not the Lieutenant Colonel. Why him? <laughs> crazy how much Al has to take care of Ed. It's all my fault. I'm the one who pulled him into this. It's all no. my fault. Okay, you boys have a safe trip. Stop in and give me a shout the next time you make it to Central. Elrix, I understand that you two don't have a place to stay. 
Ed, man, he has a way of just taking everything as his fault. I can't help but wonder if part of that is a reaction to a lot of things going wrong that are outside of your control, you know? Because maybe in some level, thinking everything is your fault gives you back some illusion of control. Like, by blaming yourself, at least you give yourself something to do, right? Like, something to focus on. That isn't the terrible thought that just, like, anything bad can happen to me at any time. But whatever the reason, Ed has sort of dug himself into a hole because now everything is his fault. And he's in this cycle that everything that happens it causes him to be more driven towards this goal at the expense of other things in his life, or at least at the expense of him understanding the other great things he has in his life. And he just gets deeper and deeper into this. And the only thing sort of keeping him in check is Al. Al has been forced into the role of caretaker for him, even though he's the younger brother. Al doesn't even have time to cope or focus on these things on his own terms, because he has to focus on Ed all the time. Oh no, now we're gonna have to watch Winry go through it too. No! What do we do? I'm the only one who has to take the blame for what happened. This isn't just your problem. Right. Like it or not, I'm going in with you. Thanks, Al. But you really don't have we to- We made up our minds. We said we were getting our bodies back, no matter what. But if people are going to die because of that, then I don't want mine back. Wow. Winry's already here. Right. I'm sorry, but there's something I need to talk to you about. About Maze? That's right. And you too, Winry. So Maze learned things about the Philosopher's Stone that someone didn't want him to know. His death was a message. A warning to you from whoever did it to back off from all this. That's not totally the truth though, right? Was it a message to Ed? It seems like that's just his interpretation. It just seems like they were killing Hughes because he learned too much. That would be just like him, dying while trying to help somebody else. I don't think he ever had regrets, not even in his dying moments, Edward. <laughs> don't tell me you're going to give up. If you do, then that means my husband died in vain. Even if the Philosopher's Stone is a dead end, there might be some other way. You boys have to keep moving forward. Any way you can. Wow. That took a lot of strength, being able to say that. You know, in some sense, and this is not totally a criticism of Ed, because the grief he's experiencing is totally understandable, right? But there's something a little bit selfish about what he's doing. You know, it's sort of like asking for absolution from the people who are hurting maybe the most. Like, he's there to ease his guilty conscience. That was very aware from her, especially somebody who herself has experienced a great deal of tragedy in all this. Like, they're all hurting, you know? Al's hurting, Winry's hurting, the wife is hurting, the daughter can't even comprehend what happened. But Ed is sort of the most wrapped up in it in terms of like his own role in it, his own involvement in it. And there's something to that, like there was some connection between Ed and Hughes, but it really isn't about that for everyone. Only Ed. Mommy. Yeah, that took a lot of her strength. The show really twists the knife, doesn't it? putting on a brave face too. Winry, you in there? Good, that's kind of what I wanted. You know, you have to eat. <laughs> okay, I'll go back to my room. Apple pie? I practiced making it a few times, but I've gotten pretty good at it. I'm not nearly as good as Miss Gracia, but someday... I hope... that Mr. Hughes will get to try some too! <laughs> apple pie, huh? It's a terrible day for apple pie. <laughs> That makes no sense what I just said, but oh well. When I saw them alone, I was hoping that they'd have a moment together. It would have been nice if Al was also included, but yeah, it does them no good to separate like that. How much are they going to go through, these guys? They go through so much. It's only like, what are we, 15 episodes in? I guess it's enough for Al to have a change of heart, right? Which, you know, for me, it's like, 
I mean, yeah, you know, if this is what it leads to, I feel like Al has his head on straighter than most. He kind of already knows what's what's important. But at the same time, there's no going back. You know, they're, they're in way too deep. And while there are some emotionally negative elements to their quest for the Philosopher's Stone and for their bodies, there's a lot of good that comes out of it too, right? Like, it's good that they're searching for something. It's good that they have a goal. It's good that they have common purpose together. It's all of those things. But you just hope that this kind of journey doesn't destroy them, right? Because I feel like that risk is there. How much can you go through before you get really cynical or hateful or like, you know, like Scar, who's so focused on revenge that he, he can't see anything else. So the nosy Colonel Mustang is snooping around the Hughes matter? Mm-hmm. Do you think he discovered anything yet? It's a definite possibility. Didn't fool me that time. We already moved him to Central where we'd be able to keep a closer eye on him. Why can't he be a good boy and behave himself? I'd hate to waste an important sacrifice candidate. Haven't been able to learn anything from your new boyfriend? Nothing. He's either a born idiot or a clueless hustler. <gasps> oh no, it's Havoc! Come on, Gluttony. Don't leave your mess lying around. You slob. But you said before about how much nicer it would be if the Flame Colonel would behave himself. Yes. How would you feel about us making another play? You have something in mind? Well, we've got a noisy mutt. Perhaps all he needs is a nice bone to chew on. What does that mean? Second Lieutenant Maria Ross. I'm Henry Douglas from the Provost Marshal's office. You'll have to come along with us. You're done. May I ask what this is about? You've been named as the primary suspect in the Brigadier General Hughes murder case. Please come along. <gasps> That's absurd. You can tell your side of it later. They're good. Second Lieutenant Maria Ross pleading not guilty on all charges. Gather whatever information you can about her. Go now, quickly, but secretly. Right. That's the thing, right? If you have like an emotional fixation, if you're crazy about something, it's a blind spot and people can use that against you. So that was very perceptive from Envy. Excuse me, ma'am. I'd like a bouquet of these, please. This guy. You've been waiting long, Solaris? Oh no, I just got here. She cleans up nice. It's so good to see you, Jean. Why don't you Jean. sit down and tell me all about your day? Ah, oh. <laughs> what the heck? That episode's crazy. It's just one thing after another. It just hits you again and again. Just twist the knife in. The name of the show should be Full Metal Alchemist. Brotherhood. Twisting the knife. Because that's all they do. <laughs> just one thing after another. We've had like one or two episodes only that didn't do something knife twisty. I miss Rush Valley. <laughs> Rush Valley was like one of the only episodes we got that was light, lighthearted. Well, if the characters weren't emotionally driven before, they're even more so now. One question that came out of this episode for me, even though it was just a short scene, is I'm really wondering for the first time where Armstrong's story is going to go. Weirdly, he's one of my favorite characters. I guess that's not uncommon, right? Like, he's just so cool, funny, muscular, but he's a sensitive guy on a weird side of things. He's living in that category of like characters who are good but are not really involved. But something about this show tells me that you can't be uninvolved. Like there is no uninvolvement. Everything is a side. Everything's gonna come to a head. I gotta say the show does a really good job of building, maintaining, and enhancing tension. And in a, in a good way too. Like the whole not knowing about Hughes' death, that could have been stretched way out over multiple episodes. I'm glad it was resolved here. So like those kinds of things are small, but in other ways the stakes keep getting raised. Like the emotional stakes for Ed are higher. And not just him, but Winry and Al too. Roy's career is ramping up and that's affecting the people around him. The Uruburos or Humunculi or whatever, they are increasingly becoming more involved. Like we see more of their side of things. And we see how intricately woven they are with the military, right? It seems like they have free access to it in a way which makes sense because of bradley so yeah it's all very exciting even if it's tragic but that's the end of this episode i'll see you next time for are there seasons in this show i don't even know is it season two episode three or episode 16